week, I, I, I revisited one of my favourite movies. Uh, a, a film that, in my belief, is totally underrated and one of the weaker films in the canon of Hitchcock's do filmography. I get a, do I get a hint? Torn Curtain. Oh, 1966. Oh, it's a yeah, great, yeah. great espionage film. Yeah. And a film which, undeservedly, is largely forgotten and uncelebrated. And, uh, you know, I'm a big Paul Newman fan. Mm. I'm a big Alfred Hitchcock fan. He's my favourite director. How can director. you not be? Exactly. Mm. Um, and, you know, in a, in, a, in a year, 2015, where so many spy films are coming out, oh, Bond, yeah, yeah. The Man From U.N.C.L.E., yeah. and this new movie, uh, Bridge of Spies by Steven Spielberg. You know, Tom Hanks, it? brilliant again. A, a, amazing film. And it, it, they're back. Yeah. yeah, they're back, but, uh, uh, you know... We'll talk about Tom Curtin. Throw in. I mean, it, yeah. it, uh, it was later Hitchcock. I mean, how does that yeah. set with your Hitchcockian top films? Look, uh, Hitchcock made a lot of spy Cold War related films, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during his lifetime. Actually, he wanted to get Cary Grant to be in Torn Curtain, he but did. he got Paul Newman instead. Well, recently he didn't get Cary Grant because Cary Grant himself said he was too old. He too old. Couldn't and do it. Yeah. He, he didn't want Julie Andrews. He wanted to get Eva Marie Saint. You know? Yeah. And they, he wanted Eva Marie Saint because of the success of North by Northwest. Yeah. It was a fantastic espionage film it again. It was, yeah. With a fantastic Hitchcock. MacGuffin mm -hmm. uh, about a microfilm mm -hmm. which got the ball rolling yeah, uh, yeah. and set the, the, the pace for the entire film. Uh, and I think because of the success of that movie, he wanted to re emulate that in Torn Curtain. Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Uh, and Hitchcock was not happy with the choice that Universal Pictures was trying to push onto him, having Julia Andrews and Paul Newman. Well, there was a reason for that. Well, Julia Andrews was the biggest star in the world at that time. She was in The Sound of Music. In, Just the year before? Uh, yeah, 65. Yeah. And yeah. Mary Poppins the year before in 1964. Yeah. She was the biggest star in the world. Yeah. But Hitchcock had a criteria that she was not fitting into entirely. He liked the cool blonde, Hitchcock. He liked the he cool wanted blonde. Eve Marie Saint. Eve Marie Saint had that sex appeal, good, which good the Andrews didn't have. Yeah. He fought Universal for that. He was quite unhappy with the film. But you know what I find interesting about that? He had Doris Day in The Man Who Knew Too Much, another espionage film. Mm -hmm. And she was uh. very similar to Julie Andrews. She was a musical actress. Um, she had that American pie Americana about her which wasn't consistent with the other femme fatales which yeah. uh, Hitchcock made famous, like Kim Novak yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Grace Kelly and Ingrid Bergman. What he wasn't you, too happy with her. What were you saying before? Apparently Spielberg was involved with Hitchcock in the early days. Yeah, Spielberg um, came to the set of Torn Curtain when it was being shot in 1965 yeah. and he watched for about 45 minutes as Hitchcock was, you know, calling the shots and before Spielberg was kicked out, he really got a, a glimpse of uh, some filmmaking genius by this Hitchcock. Is, this is at Universal. He just snuck in. Universal, yeah. yeah look, that and uh, you know, Hitch, uh, Spielberg ended up making his own uh, spy espionage epic this with year. Universal as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bridge of Spies. Yeah, Bridge of Spies. Oh, there's a fantastic film. Oh yeah, it's currently it's screening. It's a fantastic now. movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tom Hanks. How is it possible for this guy? to go from strength to strength. He's just an everyman. He's not yeah. the best looking guy. But is it the first Spielberg movie that, that delved into espionage? I think it is. Uh, Spielberg has definitely made some Hitchcockian movies like Jaws yeah, and yeah, Duel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the closest thing to espionage he would have made was Indiana Jones. And did you know that Spielberg always wanted to make a James Bond, a Bond movie? Bond film, yeah. And he wanted to direct For Your Eyes Only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he contacted the Broccoli family yeah. and he's like, please let me make this movie. And they're like, no, we want only British directors British. to make it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, around the same time when George he Lucas. and George Lucas yeah. came together and created their own James Bond, yeah, which was Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. So he got his Bond. Sort he got of. his Bond. He's got his espionage. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Indiana Jones in my books is one of the great uh, yeah, yeah. adventure of espionage Fusions. Oh, it is, it is. It's, it's, it's quite great. good. But, uh, you know, the, the Tom Hanks in Bridge of Spies is just stunning. You know? yeah. some, of the, some of the work he does in that, you know. Oh, he's from amazing. The original spy stories. And, and he's like worked with uh, Spielberg many times. Yeah, uh, Catch Me If You Can. Times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the Terminal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the fourth one, I believe. Yeah? yeah? yeah it's good. Yeah. But also, I, I, it's interesting that uh, in Bridge of Spies, 
The script was tidied up by the Cohen and Joel Ethan brothers. Oh yes, they really the Cohen fixed brothers. It up because Spielberg can be a bit sentimental, but yeah. they get the Cohen brothers in there to tighten it up and have their bit of you know, dark oh, cynicism. Bit. Yeah, it worked for this film because they kept Spielberg in check. Yeah, their films like Blood Simple oh, and their uh, first film, Fargo, brilliant. Oh, it's yeah. it's incredible. Such great dialogue. Mm. Really. Um, emphasizes the characters and builds. If you care about the characters, you, do, you, you can do. get through this. But, uh, and yeah. of course, it's a true story, which Torn Curtain is not. Mm. It's a true story about the Francis uh, Gary Powers affair, the mm -hmm. U-2 uh, uh, spy plane that was shot out of the sky, and he was taken prisoner by the Russians. But what most people don't know is that two years, three years earlier, um, a spy operating in America, a Soviet spy who was born in England mm -hmm. by the name of um, Colonel Rudolf Abel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's all right. Yeah. Rudolf Abel mm -hmm. uh, was arrested for spying, mm -hmm. allegedly spying for the Soviet Union. They found hidden America. messages yeah. found in a, in a hollow coin, mm -hmm. and the trial ended up being known as the hollow coin case. No, the actual hollow, hollow nickel thing was, was discovered. Hollow nickel, sorry, it was a hollow nickel. Uh, American five yeah. cent pieces a nickel. Yeah. As a newspaper boy, yeah. got one of these nickels for, to paying for the paper. And yeah. he, he thought it was a little bit light. Yeah. And he sort of was playing one. This is maybe a convert one. And he dropped it, yeah. and it came apart. And came what, apart. It's just like in the film, but it came apart, and it's actually hollowed out a nickel, and it's very carefully applied apart. There's microfilm on it inside. And when yeah. this paper boy dropped it, he found this microfilm and that's where they discovered this this is a new way of this Cold War espionage coming through. Oh well, look, there are many ways uh, of, of uh, transmitting secrets. Uh, well, they thought of everything. They things. thought of everything. Microfilm, uh, radio. Without the surveillance of today, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, but it was quite clever how they did it. Yeah. But you know, they didn't find him straight away. This was over a long period of time and eventually they, they arrested him in, I think it was uh, 1957, mm -hmm. and uh, in 1960, the U-2 incident occurred. Do you remember that period, by the way? I definitely remember that. You know, in 1960, yeah. I was 12 in America, and I remember Gary Powers getting shot yeah, down. Yeah. And, and was, the Cuban Missile Crisis that oh, led that to the, later with the Kennedy. big yeah. scare. And Khrushchev and his shoe on the table. Oh, my God. That must have been a really terrifying period for you. Well, were you taught to hide under the tables? We were, yeah. yeah. It was just like in the... the the TV yeah, yeah. training exercise you see. My dad as well. He was from Russia in communist know. times, and we that was know. a very terrifying period to be alive. And I think a lot of that's going on in the politics now. The fear politics, you know, it's yeah. being scared of things. You know, what you're, you're scared of can be capitalized on, and yeah, absolutely, not a, not a really good thing. Yeah, yeah. The um, bridge of spies. Uh, and that's what made it really a paranoid and suspenseful in the movie. It, mm. the, the the world was on a brink mm. of nuclear warfare. Yeah, you didn't know what was going to happen. And here you have Tom Hanks, uh, an insurance lawyer. CIA approached him and they asked him to represent uh, Rudolf Abel. Well, this was a true story. It was and a true he story. actually was involved a lot more yeah. with espionage and, and with uh, the internal inside community than the film. He's a bit more of an insurance Absolutely. lawyer. But they, they did that for the movie, I think. And what I loved about the movie is how they explored the notion that you have a lawyer who represents the American justice system where mm -hmm. everyone gets an, an equal fair trial but this is different everyone yeah. is against him it's during the mccarthy era where uh people were being mm. blacklisted as communists and judged pre yeah. prematurely and people pointing fingers and putting people away and destroying reputations overnight yeah well tom and, hanks he, he even said one yeah. of his lines in the film every man deserves a defense every man deserves that's a the defense. same that line very true. that's the same line he used in the green mile Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's quite a lot. You know, and Tom Hanks is like the Jimmy Stewart of oh, our yes, era. Yes, yeah, he always represents the strong headed roles. man who stands for justice, morals, and. and but Tom yeah. Hanks, you know, also, he, uh, he's such an incredible guy. He, he was saying that they actually. You remember that incredible scene where he's defending him to the Supreme Court? And yeah. It's an incredible defense. And the whole man, nation is against might, him. Yeah, we might be against us, but he has a right for defense. You know, he, yeah. he is. Uh, is what he is. He is such a patriot by withholding his beliefs and staying, sorry, staying with his beliefs, yeah. even though it's against what America is, yeah. is about. And that's where, based on actual court transcripts, yeah. and a lot of the scenes and a lot of the locations in Bridge of Spies were and the actual locations in Germany. I loved it, and I, I particularly love the emphasis they put on Hanks because the movie is, in reality, it was all about Francis Gary Powers yeah. and about Rudolf 
able. Yeah, but yeah. the less celebrated story is the one of um, uh, Tom Hanks playing James B. Donovan, who was one of America's greatest lawyers, because mm. not only was he able to, to organize um, and set up this exchange of prisoners that this film is about, but he, later, uh, he was responsible for freeing Thousand. captured prisoners following the failed Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba. He went in there to negotiate the release of about 60. Tom Hanks, yeah. uh, you know, in, in the movie, he's uh, getting all these death threats. Yeah, he's getting, yeah, he is. You know, people looking at him on the train as he's going to work, and mm. he's getting Even adversity, and, and yes, his yeah, family is at risk of, so of being hurt. His kids at school, oh, it's just what is terrible. your dad doing? But he maintains, this man has a right to defense. I know yeah, it, yeah. it may seem wrong, he's against it, but he's actually more patriotic to his country than yes. a lot of us. And because if he so fails to give this guy a fair trial, mm. the whole justice system collapses. He needs to, uh, uh, you know, defend the rights of yeah. everyone yeah. in order to maintain and preserve this American dream. And I think the Hanks Th that's character the great, yeah. is much more of a patriot because of that. You know, Absolutely. Uh, maintain the values rather than go down yeah. to the lower level like yeah. that. But Hank was so good. But Mr. Smith goes to Washington. <laughs> Hank was so good, but other actors, I mean, the playing, so. playing the old, um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I think I'll have a blue one this time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks. Playing the old spy, very good, and almost as equally as good as Mark Rylance. This guy was... Oh, thank was you. Star. Beautiful. Now, see? Thanks. Now, between Hanks and Rylance, mm. the interplay between these two, you know, Hanks is really staying up for his rights, yeah. and Rylance is playing this... Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Rita. Playing this... Uh, this spy was so understated. He yeah. said, don't you want to feel this? Don't, how do you feel about dying? How do you feel about this? And he kept saying, would it matter if I got upset? What, would it make any difference? Mm. Every time something really big, it's so understated. It's a Russian mentality. Is it? Yes. Yeah. It's a Russian saying, will it help if mm. I cry? Will it help if I complain? Mm. If I know what's coming and I can't do anything about it, what would it help for me to, to seek uh, you know, help or... Refuge. I know it's it's imminent. It's inevitable. What's going to happen? It's and he understands strong, that. It's such a strong performance from Rylance. Mm. You know, mm. right up there with a, a the almost career best. I would think from Tom Hanks. He was nominated for a Golden Globe for his performance. Already, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a stunning film. But you know, Spielberg and Czech. You know, Spielberg. I'm sorry, he can get a little bit sentimental sometimes, uh, even in some of his better movies. But not in this one. Yeah, you know, there was sentimental. This was a role. serious, serious film, and it gave a very um, neutral perspective for both sides. It yeah. showed how both sides operate. Both well, sides are playing their game and without any reservations whatsoever. And it finishes, you know, but it really features the two parts of this film, Bridge of Spies, you know, mm. with the, basically the story of building up the defense and having the, the swap between the character of the Gary Pirates who's been shot down in the year two and the soldier yeah. spies in America. Maybe they can do a prisoner exchange. And initially, you remember, uh, Tom Hanks, he uh, saves him from the death share by suggesting he shouldn't get the death penalty for being a spy. Not only that. maybe later on, he might be needed to exchange. And mm. he wasn't sure, but this actually eventuated. This is all true stories. Not only that, but he also uh, secured the release of Frederick Pryor, mm -hmm. uh, a young economic student studying in West Berlin mm -hmm. who falls in love with an, uh, a girl from East Berlin. American citizen. Yeah. yeah. And he tries to get her over to the west, west side of Berlin before they start building the wall. And he ends up getting arrested. That's the amazing thing about the film. Yeah. They're actually building the Berlin Wall during the film. Mm -hmm. It's a period in place. Mm -hmm. People are not sure. And some of the people escaping through the wall and coming across while there's still holes that haven't mm -hmm. been bricked in and trying at the last minute because yeah. after that, people, as Hanks... You and remember, soldiers everywhere along the border. People are literally getting shot when they try. Mm -hmm. He witnesses on, on the train. It's, it's terrible. These are historical facts, terrible times. I found that quite interesting that they selected Tom Hanks. I mean, he had no experience in helping, um, you know, or he had no experience in this field at all. Uh, that's probably why they selected him, because they didn't want able to be given a good trial. They wanted him to be given a fair one, but a bad trial. Well, as I said, you know, the actual character that Hanks was based on did have a lot of experience with some experience and had been involved with some of the espionage, some of the overall activities. Mm -hmm. And for the purpose of the movie, they made him an unbeknownst 
tax lawyer. Oh, so they it? made some changes. They changed it. Okay, right. As they all been doing the film. And oh, it, that's, a, that's a bit I made it more cinematic. He was surprised. Why do you want me? I'm only a tax lawyer. Mm. He had one little experience in the film, yeah. I think, earlier on, and they picked him because they thought he would just sugarcoat it. That's what they said. And this is a slam dunk case. This guy's going to be a death penalty. He's a spy. Take it. You know, put it down. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And Hank steps up and says, no, let's, let's just wait a minute. And the rest of the film is... It's incredible. Very good film. Oh, it's an amazing film. Um, so much. And that's why, what I love about Torn Curtain as well, is that it's a very similar film. It's, it's set in, uh, in Germany mm -hmm. after the Second World War, uh, at the height of the Cold War between Russia and America. And here you have Paul Newman, who is this uh, scientist. He's a, a nuclear physicist who fakes defection to East Berlin. And not only that, he fakes defection and he's got to keep it from his fiance. Yeah, his fiance follows Julie him. Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what he's doing there and that's, that's what is so brilliant about Hitchcock. He keeps everything so mysterious yeah. until you get really close to the end because not even we know what Paul Newman is doing. He tells his wife when they go to Stockholm that he's ticket. going to a conference. I think. He's going to a conference. He's going to England, actually. He wouldn't even go anywhere near yeah, Germany. Yeah. Where she discovered he's got a plane ticket to East Germany. What's yeah. going on? But I, I think, you know, today you get boom crash, you got special effects, noise, music, mm. everything happening. One of the amazing things, you remember that scene where he's being chased in the museum early on? Mm. And there's a man behind him, which meant to shout him, keep tracks, shadow him. Grommet. Keep track, grommet, that's right. Keep track mm. of him and find out what he's up to and make sure he doesn't get up to any bad or, or unquestionable things. Mm -hmm. And they have this chase sequence. They're walking. Yeah. But it's Hitchcock, it's still Cicero. They're just walking. He's walking in very loud sound effects in the footsteps. Yeah, Wolfgang, walking to the museum. Wolfgang Keeling, he's the German actor who played Gromek. Yeah. Easily the best character in the film. He's really menacing, really unpredictable, and always... Uh, paranoid and suspicious, skeptical about what Paul Newman is, is doing there. Is he, has he really come to defect? I kind of like the woman towards the end, personally. Do you remember the woman who uh, they wanted a bit of help to get to the train station mm. and there's this woman really wanted to defect to America and she Played was Played by uh, Le Lila Kudrova. She's a very famous Russian actress. She was in Zorba the Greek. Yeah, yeah. Stunning one. That was just a first a cameo part, mm -hmm. but she really walked away with a lot of it, I think. Very, very good role. Apparently Hitchcock uh, had a great relationship with her on the set and he, yeah. he loved her, of all the actors that were in the film. Mm. He also loved Gromek. Mm. And I think Gromek was just such a great character. But he really you know, set the, the... I have issues with this film. And, uh, I really was put off by Julie Andrews because, you know, she's a straight-laced, prim prone pommy woman. She is beautiful, she, though. She's she, very beautiful. Looks maybe one thing, but she put me off because she didn't really encapsulate the role enough. Mm. Her acting range was minimal. It's just straight on the, to me, you know, mm -hmm. straight on the top of um, The Sound of Music just a year before. They're probably filming at the same time, really, similar, they're so close. Mm -hmm. um, and she was popular, and they, she was forced on Hitchcock by the Universal Studios. But, she lost me for the role. I think she was miscast personally. Hitchcock Apparently the big problem was is that because of her popularity, she was offered so many roles mm -hmm. and she agreed to be in all those roles. Mm. And because of that, they had time constraints. It's what you do. They didn't have much time to film it. And that's, that's another reason why Hitchcock was really disappointed. Yeah. Hitchcock had a lot of problems making this movie. Mm. In addition to miscasting, in his opinion, miscasting, things being pushed upon him, he also had a falling out with his most famous music yeah. composer, Bernard Herrmann. Herman. Herman wrote all the most famous musical compositions like Psycho, North by Northwest, Vertigo, all of the great yeah, masterpieces. They get psycho, those psycho, violins. Exactly. And Bernard Herrmann actually wrote the first score he did. for Tom Curtain. They ended up dropping um, Bernard Herrmann's music for John Addison's. Who? John Addison. Well, John Addison was pretty well known. I mean, Not um, like Bernard Herrmann. Though. Yeah. Oh, well, he he did the music for uh, Sleuth and uh, Bridge Too Far. Yeah. yeah. He also did uh, Murder She Wrote music. Remember the TV show? But yeah, I mean, you can't compare it to Bernard Herrmann. He had a falling out with him. There were a lot of arguments. Bernard Herrmann wrote this brilliant score, apparently, but Hitchcock wanted a more upbeat, more modern 1960s style. Uh, well, some of Herrmann's sets uh, are still in it, actually. Mm. A few of them, but mm -hmm. mostly it's a uh, other guy. Donaldson. I don't know why Hitchcock has to think of uh, incredibly gruesome ways to kill people. Um, for example, 
You think about it, you know, in Torn Curtain. Remember? That brilliant murder scene. Brilliant well, murder scene. Maybe. It, it was a great scene. However, it, it's so difficult to kill a person. That came out of it. That went, went on and on and on. But that's what end, Hitchcock wanted to show. He wanted to show how really difficult it is in reality to kill someone. Well, yeah, and in the end, they, you remember, they, they both, Julie Andrews and Paul Newman, grabbed him and put his head in the open door of an oven and turned on the gas and the gas him on, he, he with the gas. suffocated. So. I love that scene though, because you, you get, at that point of the movie, you hate Gromick, the, the police yeah, detective, yeah. so much, because no matter what Paul Newman says or That's where he goes, acting. he's being sh shattered by him, you know? And, he, you know, Gromick's playing these uh, word games with him. Oh, in America, there was this pizzeria where I used to live. You know, he used to talk to him um, about different American cultural icons and he was with a bit he of was playing space. with him he was mm. playing with him playing yeah. with him and making him feel uh, uncomfortable trying I think Newman was a pretty cool character mm. in the end what I also thought you know the mad scientist that that uh, Paul Newman actually hooked up with again to get these secrets from the East Germans when he went mm. to Leipzig University yeah. to, to to type with this guy and, and it's a very clever how he he ended up getting that information off of him I think the most suspenseful scene in the film ensues, the, the bus chase sequence, which was very, very clever, because all these obstacles, um, uh, you know, stand in their way between East Germany and freedom. In West Germany. Yeah. And uh, it's cool to think that Spielberg was, was watching in yeah, some of those scenes. Yeah, we can imagine. A little, I wonder how old he was. Though. Probably his 20s. Teenager, yeah. Teenager, even. Yeah. yeah. And Torn yeah. Curtain is not a great film. It's not a great film, but it's highly enjoyable. Oh, sorry. I think once you sorry. start watching, you, you won't stop until the, the uh, exciting finale. It's a nice slow burn build up. Things just mm -hmm. develop and develop. As you said, we didn't know what Newman was up to until the end, you know, which goes against some of uh, Hitchcock's normal procedures sometimes. But what you he know, likes to do sometimes yeah. is actually show the audience something like like uh show the audience there's a gun under the table but the people at the table don't know and so the audience says watch out oh look there's a gun and you build suspense because the characters yeah, yeah. are totally in the dark and you like, watch out, look there's a gun there yeah this is different because we don't know what newman's up to either and it makes it better for exactly us. actually his leading actors were the most questionable and mysterious ones mm. and it was them that we wanted to learn more and more about and he would it's only divulge little by little to you because he left everything to your imagination. I really like Bridge of Spies, and for many reasons. Again, yeah. uh, so Mark Rylance, uh, the actor uh, playing the, the exchange prisoner, the exchange uh, spy, definitely enjoyed seeing him. Yeah. Well, why don't we know? Great meal. Let's get out of here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so full. I... How's my hat? <laughs> oh, you look fantastic. We, we both look like uh, international spies. <laughs> And why not? I've got the 1960s look. Yeah. You've got the 1940s look. And why not? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>